right. I always have to kneel down here because look, we're so tall. Welcome in spiritual physique yoga. We have Stacy with us today. I'm so honored and grateful. Uh, she will be our yogi, our yogini on the mat today. Um, so why don't you come onto your mat, middle of the mat, child's pose, and you can join this flow with her today. We'll get started as you're ready. Child's pose. Let's take the knees wide. Yeah. Good. And as we all take some time to come onto our mat today, let's take a few rounds of breath to arrive to make this transition as gentle as possible from whatever you were doing in your day coming into this space and this time you've created and carved out all for yourself. So long, slow, deep breaths as you start to breathe and open the back side of the body. You feel the muscles around the spine start to soften as they, even as they lengthen, they soften at the same time. Maybe walking those fingertips forward, letting the forehead be heavy on the earth. We'll take a few more deep rounds of slow breath. Bring it up to a tabletop position. Hands and knees and roll right into some cat cows as you're ready. Just start to notice how the body feels as we create different shapes being led by the breath. Nice. Good, really exaggerating. Beautiful. In our cow, and then as we come up, into our cat right through the shoulder blades the scapulas separate the chin tucks into the chest so nice beautiful couple more uh, maybe moving side to side with the hips or the head and taking a little extra movement that would feel really good Last complete round here. We'll return to a nice neutral tabletop. Nice. Good. Tucking the toes under. Good. Let's just float the knees for a round of breath. Walk those hands back one at a time. Knees floating if possible, back to the feet. Standing forward fold, knees bent generously. So allow the torso to touch the thighs, yeah. Nice, and just hang and breathe into the hamstrings. Notice if the weight is way back in the heels, if we can invite it a little bit more forward. Beautiful, yeah. Good. So long, slow, deep breaths or an ujjayi breath in and out through the nose if that's part of your practice. We're just going to breathe into those hamstrings. Two more rounds of breath. Nice, releasing the head. And we'll come into a halfway lift on an inhale when we're ready. And then exhale to fold back down to the earth. And we'll do this twice more. And even in a halfway lift as we inhale up, we can have a soft bend to our knees. Yeah, keeping the spine lengthened. Beautiful. And exhaling down. Good. So this is our last time. Let's make it the longest breath cycle. Inhaling up slowly. Good. Crown of the head forward. Weight comes forward. Yeah. And exhaling all the way down. Good. Let's inhale and roll all the way up to standing. Nice and slow. Grounding through the feet. As the head comes up, arms come up and overhead. And exhale, hands to the heart for just a moment. Good. So if you feel comfortable and safe to do so, eyes are closed. Taking a moment to maybe set an intention if that's part of your practice or to just deepen that breath. And with an inhale, circling the arms, reaching all the way up for the sky. And exhale, folding, knees bent generously so that belly touches the thighs as we come to the earth. 
inhaling halfway and exhale hands down walking forward let's come to a high plank just for an inhale breath and knees down on an exhale breath good untucking the toes Let's pause here, thinking of cat through our upper back. These are transitions that we tend to move through so quickly. We don't spend a lot of time with them. So even here with knees down in our plank, puffing up through those scapulas, the shoulder blades, elbows in line with the body. We'll take one more round of breath and with an exhale, bend the elbows, bring the chest and belly all the way down. Yeah, hips come down. Good. Inhale for that baby cobra hands to float so those wrists get a break good and see how the neck is long here it's beautiful there's no wrinkles in the back energy is flowing up and down here we'll take three more rounds of breath pressing the tops of these feet and toes down activating through the quads and lifting up just a little bit more as we squeeze the ribs it's just our last round of breath and we exhale down to the earth hands forehead touch We'll press up on an inhale and right back to that child's pose. Maybe this time knees are together. Walk those fingers forward. Uh, let's just tent those hands and float the elbows and forearms. Nice. So the head is heavy and connected to the earth. Shoulders are activated with the arms and we feel a lot of length through the back side of the body there. So this is a posture you can return to any time. Don't feel at any moment that you couldn't just drop right down because this is always here for you. Take a few more rounds of breath, eyes closed. And inhale, once we're ready, we'll come up through that tabletop. We'll tuck the toes again, float the knees, and this time we'll stay for just three rounds of breath. Nice. Good, so that third exhale, we'll lift our hips back and up for our downward facing dog. Good, bending the knees a lot. So I want to invite you to think of anything that asks your hamstrings to lengthen, like a forward fold or a down dog, to have knees bent generously, especially in the beginning. So let's walk our dog out side to side. When you're ready, really shifting the weight through the hips. So you can actually see, yeah, the hips tilt and move. We get a side body stretch all the way up through the ribs, the armpit, the arms. Yes, so nice. Beautiful breath. A couple more times, grounding through the hands, the heels of the hands, all the way through the finger joints. Good. And then just eventually making our way back into stillness in this downward facing dog once you're ready. So taking all the time that you need. Good. Let's release the head just gently side to side, up and down. Good. Imagining that these triceps are wrapping out and around as we ground down through the hands. That last round of breath. Good. All right, we're gonna come into a plank on an inhale all the way forward. Once again, lower the knees and this time lower the elbows and forearms as well. So knees will come down, forearms and elbows come to the earth. We'll just come into a forearm plank with knees down. Yeah. Sorry, yes, perfect, untucking those toes. Nice, good. So a couple rounds of breath. Good. And when we lower from this forearm plank, we'll separate the arms and we'll just come down to Sphinx pose. So bringing the hips, heart down. Good. So we already had our baby cobra. This is a supported back bend here. If we felt in our low back that there was room or it was asking for more, we could float those elbows up into seal. And if not, staying grounded down through elbows and forearms. Oh, and when we're up, we're up in seal. Good. Two rounds of breath. Elbows pulled down and away from the ears. So beautiful. Good. So the lower body actually relaxed and supported on the earth. And we'll bend those elbows to lower down. Triceps bring you to the earth to touch at the bottom of that exhale. Good, let's pause here for a round of breath. And now 
we'll inhale the arms forward think of superman so the legs are obviously back arms come forward good forehead stays down arms are activated the next inhale we'll lift just the right leg up and off the mat right leg comes up yeah good now if it's too hard to keep the head down or awkward we can float the head if off the mat we'll take one more round of breath with just that right leg and lower it down and then left leg comes up and off the mat yes good nice one more slow deep round of breath you got it and down with the left leg good. let those arms come down as well hands slide back under shoulders as the elbows bend good. press back to a child's pose or a down dog they both will feel really good after some back bending on the belly like that. So whatever your body appreciates the most. Good. Bending those knees a lot, shifting the weight back. Heels never needing to touch the earth. Just heading in that direction. Last round of breath. Good. Bending the knees and walking the feet forward to the hands, nice and wide. Yeah, toes out, heels in. We'll eventually bend those knees for Malasana squat pose. Good. Good. Nice. So lifting the heart through and up in this nice long stretch through our spine. This is so beautiful. Now your heels may touch the earth like Stacy's here easily. Uh, and if not, that's okay. You could try stepping your feet a little bit wider. Um, and if they still don't touch, it's no problem, right? It's, we're all built differently. We've all been gifted and we're born in a body that either has, you know, connective tissue that likes to give a whole bunch or maybe doesn't like to give a whole bunch. So no problem. We've got two more rounds of breath here in our squat pose. We're going to make a transition. If this sounds funky, it's not. It's really easy. We'll just inhale the arms forward. We'll feel our squat activate. Yeah. And as we exhale, swing the arms back behind you. You're going to come back into a reverse tabletop. So just plant the hands and the hips go up as you turn the toes forward. Now hands can face to or away from your feet. It doesn't matter. Naturally, Stacy's hands came away from her body. That's beautiful. Hips to lift. So imagine just as we were in tabletop before here, we'll just walk these feet forward just a little bit. Yeah, and aim to get knees over ankles. Good. We'll take just two more rounds of breath. And with that second exhale, hips come down to the earth. Let's come off those hands as we come forward into Navasana, boat pose. So the arms will circle forward and the feet will just lift. Yeah, nice. So beautiful. Heart up and open, chin open. Yes, embracing the shake. And we got two more, that's it. This next exhale, we'll bend the knees into the chest, roll onto the back, rock side to side, and maybe a couple times forward and back. So we'll eventually roll through our spinal rolls and either come up to a seat and help ourselves or come all the way to a standing forward fold at the front of the mat. Yes, beautiful, good, head to hang happy. Release side to side, up and down. Love the bend in the knees. Even if you have loose hamstrings, give it a try. Just really bend the knees and then feel your stretching gauge in other parts of the body. You can feel it come all the way up through your lower back. Nice. All right, inhaling to a halfway lift here. And exhale, we'll fold down. Good. Inhale, roll all the way to stand. Tadasana, mountain pose. The arms will circle and reach for the sky. Exhale, hands to the heart. Yeah, let's take a moment here. Samastitihi, just as we realign the body into standing. Good. And we'll take an inhale, circle the arms up. And on an exhale, chair pose. Bend those knees, shift the weight back towards the heels. Yeah. Good. So just our first one here. 
taking it nice and easy and noticing how we don't have this big lower back kind of sway. It's just a nice long spine, right? Beautiful. Knee squeeze. We look down, we can see our toes, pretty painted toes. Get one more round of breath. And with an inhale, rise all the way up, lift the gaze to the hands. Exhale, cactus the arms, open the chest, add a back bend. Yeah, inhale all the way up. Exhale all the way down as we forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale halfway, exhale to the earth, plant the hands, step the feet back, high plank, and let's pause. So this will be our first high plank, and once again, we tend to transition through these postures so quickly and sometimes so often through a practice or a flow that it's nice to take some time with them. So we have cat through our upper back here, imagining that we're rounding through the scapulas. Nice and strong through the arms as the shoulders pull away from the ears and engaging the legs, the quads, just as strong as the upper body to help support our plank. We'll just one more round of breath. Uh, and we'll slowly lower to the earth, knees or the whole body. Good. Let's inhale and come up for a mid cobra. So maybe we come up about halfway. Yeah, neck is long, good. Elbows squeeze the side of the body. Imagine these elbows coming back towards the hips. We'll stay for another round of breath as we open through the front of the chest, press the tops of the feet down and then release on the exhale. Inhale, press up, hands and knees, or right to a float of, you can, yeah, you can come right up to a plank, hands and knees, perfect, down dog when you're ready. Good, let's walk the feet together side by side, center of the mat, we'll lift just the right leg here, right leg comes up. Good. So from here, we'll even out our hips, dropping the right hip in line with the left. And let's just bend the knee. Yeah, bring that foot in. And then just steady yourself through the breath and the arms. Good. So we're going to take some movement here. Inhale, lengthen that right leg. Point those toes. Exhale, knee to nose. Bring it forward in a plank and try to touch that knee. Good. Inhale, back and up. Exhale, bend the knee, try to kick your butt with that heel. Good. Lengthen the leg, inhale, knee to nose, forward in a plank, beautiful. And then we'll do this just one more time. Back, bend the knee, kick the butt on the exhale. Nice, inhale to lengthen. And we'll step it through on the exhale this time. Good, lower that left knee. <laughs> and let's come up to the right knee a low lunge. So both hands to the right knee as we come up. Yes. So imagine there's a lot that we're asking of the body here as we start to come into these lunges. We're, we're compressing this right hip a whole lot, that hip flexor, and we're asking this left hip to open a whole lot here. So engage this back left glute. Give it a squeeze and a release a couple times. Feel the front of that hip flexor start to release. And it's just as much as we're sinking down into the lunge, we're lifting energy up through the spine and right up to the crown of the head. So beautiful. So let's inhale the arms up as an extension of that energy right up overhead. Good. And we'll stay for just two rounds. So nice. Exhale, fold the hands to the mat to the inside of that right foot. Walk that right foot out to the right. So give yourself a little bit more room. Yeah, and we'll add a twist in here. So right hand to right knee. We'll take a look over that right shoulder as you're ready. Oh. Nice. Deepening the breath. So one, last round of breath, foot can either be connected to the earth or roll to the outside edge of the foot. One might feel better to you than the other. Now let's untwist, bring that right hand down. Tuck those left toes, let's come off that knee. Right leg goes back and up once again. And this time as we bend the knee, we'll open the hip. So let's, yes. <sighs> That bent knee is reaching for the sky. Maybe we can look underneath our left arm, for, or excuse me, our left arm, yes, for our right toes. 
There we go. Yes. Last round of breath. So nice. Extend that leg. Let's bring it down. Yes. All right. High plank on an inhale. We'll come forward. Low plank on an exhale. We'll come into a back bend on an inhale. Now, this is so often used in practice. Right? We can come up as much as the body will allow, but we want to do so with intention. And then we unwind with an exhale back down to the earth out of that back bend. Then press up on an inhale, down dog or child's pose on the exhale. slow deep round of breath this is also a nice time before you switch sides to take a child's pose to take a rest if you might need big toes together to touch in the middle of the mat if you're ready to move on and then the left leg lifts so a three leg down dog so nice we'll bend that knee bring the heel close to the glute yeah so imagine even as the knee bends we're still creating length through that leg so it's challenging to bend the knee and lengthen the leg at the same time okay one more round of breath and with an exhale actually no inhale lengthen that left leg first and then exhale knee to nose let's bring it forward squeeze try to touch it yeah back and up inhale exhale bend the knee kick the butt lift that knee yes inhale lengthen exhale knee to nose come closer than you might think yes back and up just one more time kick that butt yeah Good. lengthen and as you lengthen the leg inhale good go ahead step it all the way through knee to nose and we come all the way through good. lower down right knee yeah let's come up into our low lunge when you are ready so hand on knee yeah and just taking it nice and easy it's a perfect time to try to notice and come into kind of awareness of where our body likes to naturally go. That front knee over the front ankle stacking our joints gives our body stability and actually allows your muscles to release even more because they feel supported. And as we sink down, we engage this back right glute so we can help to open the front of the right hip. Good, so nice and long through the spine and then we inhale the arms up. And so just as much as we're sinking into the lunge and feeling all the feels, we're reaching up through the fingers. Yeah. Last round of breath. And we'll exhale, hands to the mat, to the inside of that left foot, and walk that foot nice and wide, sinking the hips. Now, if your right knee needed a little bit of a break before the twist, you could tuck the toes and float that knee for a moment. And if you're ready to twist left hand, left knee, we look over the left shoulder sinking and once again the foot is either flat or we roll to the outside edge yeah. last deep round of breath Good. left hand to the mat tuck those back toes lift the knee send that left foot back and all the way up bending the knee to open the hip Really focusing on opening this hip here and then turning shoulders to square. So we have an opening right here. Last round of breath, lengthening that left leg on an inhale and floating it down on an exhale. Good. Perfect time to check in with yourself. Would you appreciate a flow? Would you like to skip one? Is it time for a child's pose? Okay, so Stacy, you decide. Are you up for? Moving through another vinyasa, are you chaturanga out? We're gonna take about the next 60 seconds or so, and you can either go through a flow, hold your down dog, come into a child's pose, or any variation of those. still have about 35 seconds we come into a resting pose if you'd like knees down yeah very nice oftentimes when we come to our mat we feel as though uh, or believe that we have to go 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 and move through all these postures uh, but the rest is just as important as the active 
so it's finding a balance and giving ourselves the permission to not push all the time but to also pause to receive so here in this receiving posture we're opening the back side of the body the back side of the heart breathing deeply feeling the ribs move and open and expand allowing the hips to sink the knees to compress Nice, so you look so great here. While we're here, let's just get an outside shoulder stretch. So we're just gonna lift the head for a moment, slide the right arm underneath the left arm, palm face the sky. Yep, yeah, and then bring the forehead back down or look to the right instead of the left, yeah. So still a nice, relaxing child's pose. We're just adding a nice gentle stretch for the side of the neck. The outside of the shoulder. Yeah, it's just letting everything soften a bit to the earth, releasing engagement where it's not needed at the moment. And then we'll untwist the head, forehead and nose points down, then lift the head, slide that right arm back and through and just pause for a round of breaths before we do the same for the left shoulder. Take your time as you're ready. The left arm will just slide under. You'll notice to the point where you can scooch it enough to be feeling a stretch, but it shouldn't be uh, too difficult or painful. It should feel really good. And, um, Stacy's got a lot of movement here. We don't all have um, that loose of a neck and traps here, you might find yourself with your forehead down on the mat being exactly enough for you. Um, this is a nice neck stretch, so softening. And then first untwisting through the neck and the head, so forehead or nose comes to the mat and then sliding that left arm. Nice, so coming back here. When you're ready, we'll create a transition up to a downward facing dog. Trying not to be in a hurry, but rather with intention, using the breath, lifting those hips back and all the way up. Nice. And we'll come up high onto the toes, bend the knees, look forward to the hands, and we'll step all the way to the top of the mat. And we'll inhale halfway. And exhale to fold. Let's inhale, rise, get long and tall as we circle the arms. Exhale into that cactus, hips and, yes, hips forward, hips inhaling up. And exhale, hands to heart, bend the knees, chair pose, uttasana. So we'll come right back into a chair pose here. So we'll prepare to add a twist. So when we're ready, twist over to the right, either leaning forward to hook the elbow on the knee, although it's not necessary. You could stay up nice and high as we engage our twist. So whatever feels like the best for you today, staying up nice and high. Yeah. And then we just bring that left hip back. So the left knee is, is still in line with the right. It likes to poke forward when we twist the other way. Good. And the weight is in the heels. Just kind of play around with where we feel that weight. We're going to use this a little bit later. And then we'll untwist, inhale to rise, arms come up, exhale to cactus. So let's give ourselves a little break in between sides. Good. Inhaling up, hands to heart, exhale. Anjali Mudra, bend those knees, chair pose. We'll prepare. And so our twist, engaging from the mid and upper body. Good. Yes, so hips stayed squared to the top of the mat. Right knee back in line with the left. Looks so amazing. And weight in the heels. We can play around with that. Again, so we'll add on and we'll have a step back later on. Just kind of noticing where we're at. Last round of breath. Let's untwist, stand to rise. Inhale, arms come all the way up. Exhale, hands through heart center. And this time, fold all the way down to the mat. Inhale, halfway. And exhale to fold. All right, good. So from here, we're gonna take this right leg and just float it back. So half splits as the right leg comes. We'll just flip, it's okay, we'll float into a half splits. Just, yes, right leg, yeah, beautiful. Sometimes it's my words, right? Not coming out 
quite correctly. So let's drop this right hip down in line with the left and you lose some height in the leg and that's no problem, but the hips are gonna be squared. Good. Coming nice and light on those hands. We'll take one more round of breath. Good, and then bend that left knee and now float those right toes to the back of the mat. Come right up into our crescent lunge this time. You can come up to that left knee on this first time or come all the way up if you're ready. All right, it's our first, it's our first high lunge. Yeah, beautiful. Good, so once again, just like in chair pose. Um, so notice Stacy has trained her body to not have this big sway where the ribs are coming forward and the pelvis has kind of shifted and tilted back, but instead it's tucked under and nice and long. Yeah, last round of breath, front knees over front ankle. Good, with an exhale, hands to heart center. Good, so let's just pause here for a moment. We're gonna lean forward with the upper body, inhale to lean. Good, and then coming right into our warrior three. So coming off those back toes. And if we need a hop, yeah, beautiful. So this is what our half splits got us ready for, no problem. Okay, so hips are squared to the ground. It's our last round of breath. Good, bend that standing knee, plant your right foot. And inhale up, exhale cactus. Inhale, rise with the arms and exhale, fold down. Let's step that left foot back to meet the right. We come into our high plank and then decide, do we want to take a flow? Is there something that we'd like to add on? Is there something that we'd like to remove today? What would our body appreciate the most? Taking at least three rounds of breath through these transitions meet in a down dog or child's pose. And again, there we'll have at least three rounds of breath. We all have a own unique breath rate and it changes throughout our practice depending on what we're doing. So taking time to notice that for three complete rounds. Nice. And we'll inhale up onto those toes, bend the knees generously, look forward, step or hop top of the mat. We'll arrive in a standing forward fold. Inhaling halfway. Exhale, fold down. Good. Inhale, let's rise all the way up. Nice long spine. Exhale, cactus, shift the hips and pelvis way forward. Yes, inhale all the way up. Hands to heart center, bring it down. Let's take another chair pose. So this time, as we bend the knees for our chair pose. Yes, good, so the weight shifts to the heel. Now we're just gonna play around here by floating one foot and then another. So just lightly picking right foot up and off the mat, just an inch or two, staying deep in that bend in the left knee, and then lower exhale, right foot down. Good, left foot floats as you're ready. Yes, playing around. Last round of breath, the exhale brings it down and we fold all the way to the earth. Good, let's release the head and neck, stay down here for an extra round of breath. We'll come into a halfway lift as we're ready. Good. Exhale, bend the knees, so plant those fingers, half splits left side. So left leg goes back and up, yes. Hips square, head hangs heavy. So as we drop the left hip in line with the right, again, we might lose some of the height, but that's no problem, right? We're not looking to lift that leg all the way up to the sky. Yeah, and abandon that standing knee as much as we might need or appreciate. Last round of breath. All right, land those left toes to the back of the mat. Here, our crescent lunge. We inhale to come up either to the knee or all the way once we're ready. Good, so once again, Stacy has practiced for many years and has already trained herself that when she comes up to step the right foot out to the right gives a bit a little bit more stability but also just helps helps her to come right into front knee over front ankle there it is yes and heart to stay lifted Good, beautiful we've got two more rounds of breath 
Yeah, getting ready for our challenge, exhaling hands to heart, Anjali Mudra, leaning forward with the upper body. So the degree that we lean, we start to transfer the weight to the front foot, and we're gonna come into that warrior three. So we take our time, yes. Embrace all of the wiggles. It's not easy to stand on one foot, right? And balance is challenging. Coming back into the breath. We got it, just one more. Good, bending that front knee, land those back toes, crescent lunge, inhale, arms up. Exhale, cactus. Inhale, rise with the arms and fold all the way down to the mat. Good, right foot back. High plank, low plank, skip the plank. All right, planks are not mandatory or necessary. You can add on beautiful ekapata. We can have a little bit more of a challenge. Again, down dog or child's pose. Right? So remember when you're in your down dogs, you're in an inversion. Um, you're not just uh, you know, upside down, but you're stretching the entire length of the back of the body. Right? So wherever you are, down dog or child's pose, we'll let the head hang heavy. Give a gentle bend to those knees. I gotcha, yeah. Two more rounds of breath. Good. And then we'll bend the knees a lot. Come onto the toes, look forward. Step or hop, top of the mat. Good. Inhaling halfway when we arrive. And exhale to fold. Good. Inhale, let's come all the way up. Exhale, cactus. Love these. Good. Inhale up, hands to heart, pause, and we'll come into a stork pose. So floating right foot up and off the mat as we bend the knee, we can keep that knee bent, coming up maybe around hip height or extend right leg forward as you flex the foot. And if that feels like too much on the quad, we stay right there with that knee bent. It's going to transition us back into that warrior three. So when you're ready, right leg goes back. Yeah, challenging, you got it, so beautiful. Finding your drishti, last point of focus. Land your back toes, crescent lunge, inhale up. Exhale, warrior two, rolling back, heel down. So we've done a bit of opening for the hips, yes, and for the shoulders, so nice. Again, coming back in, Stacey's got this muscle memory that brings her back into these asanas so nicely. We'll inhale, reverse warrior. Staying in that lunge. Nice front knee over front ankle. Last round of breath. Back to a warrior two. Inhale here. Side angle as we lean forward, yes. Side angle, obviously, for this beautiful long line of side opening energy here. Last round of breath, we stay in the lungs. Come back to a warrior two. From a warrior two, crescent lunge. Spin those hips forward, close, spin onto those back toes. Good, stay for a round of breath, and just as we did before, you're gonna lean the upper body forward. So all arms and upper body forward, step right foot to left, chair pose, top of the mat. Yes, a deep round of breath, beautiful. And exhale to fold all the way down. Yes, let's take a few rounds of breath here in our fold. How we doing? Good, yay. All right. And let's inhale halfway, we'll come up. Fold all the way down. Inhale, rise up nice and slow, arm circle, hands come to heart on the exhale. So that's first stork pose got us ready here. We're gonna stay on the same side before we do the other side. So same foot lifts, right foot lifts up and off the mat, knee stays bent. We're gonna bring the ankle to the top of that left knee, standing figure four. Good. So hands can stay at heart as you bend into that left knee or hands can come to ankle and knee. Yeah, good, so standing figure four, couple rounds of breath, you can stay up nice and high, you can sink in, challenging, we're still balancing, find your point of focus. Be patient with yourself, last round of breath. Good. Inhale, stand all the way up, and then let your right foot cross over your left foot, just plant it down. Inhale, arms lengthen. Exhale, fold. 
Now, a little tricky, right, with legs crossed. You can still bend both knees. You're gonna get as much of an outside hip stretch as you allow the hip to kind of bump out. So allow the body to move and to be, especially if you feel a lot of sensation. Some breath there, allow yourself to be, go there. Release the jaw, yes, beautiful breath. Last round. So we're gonna get us ready for our pigeon pose. Good, so we'll come kind of into a halfway lift on an inhale, just to bend and uncross that right foot and then plant it next to the left. Oh yeah, all right, shake it out. Good. Do you need some water or anything before we do the other side? Okay, all right. So just taking a moment here as we reground and then we'll move to explore the other side. So when we're ready, we'll find stork pose for the left foot, right? Hands can be on hips, they can be at heart center. I mean, you can position and use your upper body to help you in any way, good. So knee bent over ankle or leg extends forward, still in stork pose. Yeah, it's a left leg, yep. Can extend or, yep, yep, so good. Now we're gonna make that transition into warrior three on this side, so moving nice and slowly. We tend to think we have to move so quick. Again, through these transitions, we'll slower, more intention, right? A breath, you have a soft bend to that standing knee. You got it, it's beautiful. Now, nice and gently, we'll bend into that right knee, land those left toes to the mat. Roll that back heel down as you come through your crescent lunge for a moment in warrior two. Yes, good. So once again, Stacy's body's automatically finding its alignment because she has practiced for so long. But what's nice for the rest of us that maybe haven't is you just look down, make sure that you can see your front big toe, make sure that your knee is not coming to the inside, but rather to the pinky side edge. You're rolling this back left hip open back with your left heel. Shoulders are back and down. Let's inhale, reverse warrior, keeping lower body exactly as is. So nice. Good. So once again, the front knee stays over the front ankle. Staying in the breath, beautiful. Last one. Back to a warrior two, we unwind the arms, lean forward on an inhale, side angle, left arm up and over, and we receive this beautiful side body stretch. So the elbow can rest on the thigh or the knee. Once again, we breathe into the side body. Come back to our warrior two, we'll inhale, spin into that crescent lunge. Yes, arms come up. Good, we're gonna lean upper body forward. So shift the weight to that front foot. Step into that chair pose, Uttasana once again. Chair pose, top of the mat. Yes, only for a round of breath as a transition. And exhale to fold. Nice, inhale halfway. Exhale, fold, and then we'll come all the way up. Inhale. It's cactus on the exhale, send the hips and pelvis forward, nice. Inhale up, hands to heart center, good. So once again, we're gonna do the other side, but this time moving into our standing figure four. So start pose as the left foot lifts. Yes, knee can stay bent or leg extends, no problem. We're here for one more complete breath cycle before we bend that knee, ankle to the top of the right knee. And then we bend into that right knee as much as is available to us. Hands at heart center help us to stay aligned or use our center line as our balance point. So press the hands together, use the upper body to help you balance. And as you press that bent left knee out to the left, sinking into that right knee. Good, last round of breath, so nice, great job. Inhale, stand up and left foot over right foot, just behind the earth. Good, arms come all the way up. Make sure your feet are stable and then exhale to fold down. And once again, you are gonna release and shift those hips as much and where you feel the most. Take a bend in the knee, right, if we need to, that's always okay. Releasing the head, so nice. And maybe a few exhales out of the mouth. Beautiful. Good, last round of breath. We'll just uncross those feet. Come 
into a halfway lift, inhaling up, and exhale to fold. Yeah, inhale all the way up, exhale, hands to heart center. Yeah, so taking a moment here, Samastiti Hi, once again, as we used our asanas to build on through our stork pose, we're gonna do the same here with our twisted chair. So once we're ready, chair pose, Uktasana. And then we'll bring the hands either to heart center. I can't remember. Do you like hooking your elbow on your knee or not really? You like your arms to open wide like you fly. I think you usually fly. Well, let's try. We'll extend arms. Let's fly with Stacy today. Arms extend. So inhale. Good. And now we're going to twist and open to the right. So circle the right arm down. That's it. Yes. Beautiful. And so pulling this left knee back in line. So here I am and both of her knees are in one line with her hips here. This is beautiful. Twist is happening from the mid and the upper body. It's our last round of breath. Good. Untwist. Inhale. Rise all the way up. Lift your gaze to your fingers. Exhale. Cactus. Inhale. Lengthen. Exhale. Chair pose. Good. Once again, once we get into our twist, other side, we'll have three long, slow, deep rounds of breath. Yeah, go for it. Nice. So the palms turn away from us, so the shoulders roll back and open. That right hip pulls back in line with the left. Beautiful. A last deep, complete round of breath. And with that next inhale, we rise. Get long and tall. Maybe even come up off of the heels to the toes. Exhale, heels down. Cactus arms. Inhale all the way up. Exhale, let's fold all the way down. Good. Halfway up, inhale. Exhale, step those feet back. If you have a hop in your practice, you land with elbows bent. We'll come through our Chaturanga Dandasana here into our back bend. Beautiful. Any variation? Yeah, cobra, up dog. Good. Let's unwind and down dog. Three rounds of breath, either in our down dog or down towards the earth in a child's pose. Good, so just a little bit more twisty work here. We're gonna walk those big toes side by side in our down dog. Lift that right leg all the way up, inhale. Exhale, right knee, right elbow. Come forward to touch the arm and squeeze. Good, inhale back and up. Right knee, left elbow, twist the body, squeeze that air out. Good, inhale back and all the way up. Exhale, bring that right foot to the outside of the right hand. So right where we just were, yes, good. Right hand stays where it is. Let's twist the left arm up towards the sky. You can roll that back heel down, yeah. Beautiful, good, round of breath here. Good, untwist, left hand to the earth. Good. Come back onto those toes if you grounded that heel, which is beautiful, and then twist right arm up. All right, so we want to twist and open both sides. So oh, nice. Yep, or all the way back. Let's untwist back down to the earth. Good. Yes, framing that foot. Pause here for just a moment. Inhale, right leg back and all the way up. Stay for a round of breath. And this time we'll twist the other way. So right knee to left arm. Let's come through and extend the leg. Roll your back heel down. Yes. Fallen star as we come up to lift the hips. Beautiful. This should feel really good even though it might be challenging. It's a huge opening for the hip and side body. Let's stay one more round of breath. Good. Roll that left hand down. Roll onto those left toes. Allow yourself the grace of the transition. Right leg back and up. Good, and ground that foot down. Good. Deep round of breath here. Big toes to touch, other side, left leg to lift, inhale. Good. Bring that knee forward to the left arm anywhere. Tap that arm, yeah, back and up, inhale. Good, over to that right arm, twist and squeeze. Nice, back and up. And then step it nice and wide. So it's like a lizard lunge as we come wide with that left foot. Yeah, or a runner's lunge back 
foot is lifted. So that left hand stays where it is. Roll this right heel down. Like think of a warrior two, twist to open right arm towards the sky, right? Not as easy as when we twist the other direction, but just as important. Last round of breath. Roll that hand down, roll onto those back toes. Make sure that you're grounded and then inhale to lift and lengthen left arm towards the sky. This is the twist that our body is used to. Beautiful. And then maybe back here towards me, arm, yeah. Nice. And then inhale up and around and down. Good. Send that left leg back and all the way up. You got it. All right, stay for a round of breath. And we move left knee to right arm, fallen star, other side. Slide it through, take a moment. So once again, Stacy's done this posture, obviously many times. She, her body is very familiar with where to move. If you are not, you just simply lower your hips and have a seat and then come back up. It's our last round of breath, opening side body. And then come over with control, right hand. Yes, left leg through and up. Good. and then ground down all right it's our last chaturanga because Stacy's so good at it we're gonna go one more time inhale forward high plank watch upper body and lower body lower at the same time either all the way or halfway beautiful flipping the toes inhaling to up dog shoulders are back and away from the ears and then this transition downward facing dog yeah yeah so nice all right, I think we're ready and nice and warm for our pigeon pose. So once you're ready, that right leg will just lift to bring the knee through, the ankle through. Let's get into our pigeon as we start to lower down. Good. Now I personally love to do what Stacy's doing here and staying up nice and high. Even if this is extra challenging here, bringing the hands to heart center will help to engage the muscles that you're looking to release in your pigeon. So it's a little bit more activation at the beginning, but then you'll slowly lower hands to the mat, right? And maybe come down to elbows and forearms. Now this is one of those juicy postures that we stay quite a bit longer than others, than say a standing balancing posture. There's a lot going on here. We're asking a lot of the body. So check back in with the breath. Notice if the breath is in alignment with releasing the body. Is the breath flowing in and out effortlessly? Let the shoulders soften. Let the jaw soften. Good. We'll stay for four more rounds of breath. Sometimes it's just nice knowing how much longer we'll stay and we can settle in. Good. Now, my favorite part of pigeon is coming out of pigeon. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. So when you're ready, up to hands. We'll take this nice and slow. Tuck those back left toes. Lift the knee. Right leg will go back and up. Good. And now either bend the knee and open the hip with that right leg or take a wild thing, which I feel for my body feels the best after a pigeon. Just imagine all that compression you just did and now opening it up. Beautiful. Last round of breath. So nice. We'll come back over slowly with control. Down dog. Hips to lift. Release that head before we move to the other side. So that left leg will lift and we will create the transition into pigeon for the other side of the body. Nice. Good. So not all bodies can come into pigeon this effortlessly, right? And beautifully, you've, you've got this uh, hands at heart center here when you're ready. Good, now for me, Stacy's here on her left side, I've had two knee surgeries on my left knee. It is a lot more challenging side to side. So as we lower down, just kind of noticing what this side is asking for, how this side is feeling not necessarily having any expectation that this side behaves as the other side because they're two totally different sides of your body. Yeah, so just notice where you might feel tension or engagement and just allow the breath to wash over that area of the body. 
We'll release the muscles around the jaw and the shoulders. We'll take four more rounds of breath here, nice and slow. Allowing the body to open, telling the body that it's safe to release, and to let go. We store a lot energetically in our hips. Once we're ready to come out of this, we'll first ground the hands, moving nice and slowly. And then tucking those back toes, lifting the knee so we have the support of the lower body. And then left leg goes back and up. Yeah. So again, you could stay here or bend the knee to open the hip as the foot hangs heavy or all the way over as we flip our dog into wild thing. Beautiful. It's a counter stretch, right? It's exactly where we just were, only opposite. And we'll come over to our high plank and then let's lower all the way down to the mat through a low plank yes good let's untuck the toes when we arrive legs come together we'll bring the arms back by our sides for a locust pose so when we're ready we'll inhale lift the head arms and legs up and off the mat locust good yeah two more rounds of breath Beautiful, some back side body love and exhaled all the way down, forehead, arms, and legs. Good, so that's our first variation, our locust. You can do this same variation again if that felt really good for your body. If you'd like a little bit more, interlace fingers behind your low back so that you could open up the chest, the front of the shoulders. If that bind isn't working for you, no problem. Once again, your arms are by your sides. If you do have the bind, take a soft bend through those elbows first, squeeze the heels of the hands together, and then let's inhale and come up with the legs and the head, arms float, great. So forehead, excuse me, yes, you knew what I was gonna say and I didn't even say it, awesome. Good, two more rounds of breath, right? If you have the bind, use it. Really squeeze through the fingers, let the chest open and release, reach knuckles back for toes, and then let's come down slowly to the mat. Release the bind, legs come down. <sighs> and once again, if that first version or the second felt really good for your body, then go ahead and do that again. Um, if you'd like to move on, you could bend the knees and reach hands for ankles. I don't remember, is this one that your body appreciates? Yeah, okay, cool, good. So the first start, even when we grab our feet, is to bend those elbows. I like to release, pull, so we get a nice stretch for our quads while we're letting our forehead rest on the earth. And then the knees will stay together. I like to keep my elbows bent as I begin kicking my feet into my hands. So start to create, yes, and then lift the head. And then maybe the legs float, maybe not so much, but the engagement of the lower body back into the hands helps to open the upper body even further. All right, so we got two more rounds of breath. You got it, it's so nice. And when we release nice and slow so that we don't throw those legs back, beautiful. Legs come down. Let's create a pillow for our forehead with our arms and just rest. Nice. A couple rounds of breath and then we're gonna come into a twist from our belly, which I really like doing because it's very gentle. Uh, before we'll turn over onto our backs and have a spinal twist that way, which your body's probably very used to. Good. So from here, let's just slide the right arm forward on the mat. Yep. Bend that left knee out to the left so it's going to come off of your mat. Good. You're going to pause here for a moment. And now we're going to roll over. So you're going to press yourself up roll over. Does that sound crazy? Yep. Yep. Press up. Yes. Beautiful. Oh, so nice. So the difference that I find with coming into a spinal twist from the belly is that the knee was already connected to the earth because you were resting there. So, you know, oftentimes when we come from our back, our knee is floating and you know, you're thinking, well, should I be touching the earth? Do I need to pull it down? But here, since we came in this way, uh, it allows the body to continue resting and staying connected to the earth. Good. So just two more rounds of breath. Notice if the jaw is tight, if the face has any sort of 
kind of engagement. The toes are soft, the shoulders are soft. So nice. And then we'll just untwist back to the belly, nice and slowly. That left arm comes over and the left leg slides back. Yeah, and let's just rest for a moment before we explore the other side. Again, taking our time to move into that twist. The left arm can stay extended as it is. The right leg opens the right knee out to the right. Yeah. Yeah, and that's always a nice place to pause right here too. Uh, once you're ready, you'll just roll that upper body as you open. Yeah, very nice. Good. And if your knee did happen to lift off the mat, that's no problem, right? Your knee can hover or float in a twist. If you'd like to unwind a little bit and connect the knee so that it is a little bit more of a gentle twist, you can do that as well. Good. Eyes are closed. Jaw is soft. A couple more rounds of breath. This should feel really good. So. If it doesn't, you're not quite there. Just allow the body to move so that you find it. Beautiful. And we'll slowly just untwist back to the belly, just part by part when you're ready. Yeah, right arm, right leg. There's no hurry. Let's rest on the belly. A few rounds of breath. Now from here in that twisting, we're gonna press up to hands and knees and take one more child's pose. Good, so lots of variations available in our child's pose. Much like Stacy, I love to have my knees wide, big toes to touch and bring space for your torso and for your chest to come down to the earth. Arms could wrap by your sides, arms could go behind you. Right? Just give yourself permission for these last few rounds of breath to go to the place that feels the best for your body. A gentle transition up to a tabletop on an inhale. We'll just come to hands and knees. And we'll walk those knees forward towards the hands and we'll cross the ankles to just have a seat. So we should be somewhere towards the middle or the top of our mat so we have room to lay down on our backs. So when you're ready, yeah, scooch just a little bit. Good. Let's extend those legs out in front of us and roll all the way down. Bring that right knee into the chest. Give it a big squeeze. We'll open that right knee out to the right. Yes, the left arm can go out for kind of the counterbalance if that feels good. If you're super bendy flexy and this is not enough for you, you can always lengthen that right leg out, reach for the toe. Whatever works, we've got just a couple rounds of breath here. And really breathing into the hamstring, into that hip. We're going to transition this to our spinal twist, much like we did on our belly. So we'll bend that knee and then we'll help that right knee cross over to the left. Inhale. Inhale together. Nice. Good. So once again, this should feel really good. That right palm, flip it to face the sky. Twist that right leg, bringing that right knee in again and left knee in as well. Let's rock side to side here. And in between here, our sides, let's take a happy baby once you're ready. Rocking side to side or staying still. And tucking the chin into the chest just a bit to lengthen through the neck. Tailbone reaching for the earth. Release 
Twist that right leg, let it find the earth, and transition to holding your left knee. Give it a squeeze. Open it out to the left when you're ready. Right arm out to the right. like Stacy. Yes. Perfect time for open mouth exhales, allowing the breath to leave the body along with any tension or stress, any muscle engagement, anything that no longer serves. If your leg is extended, bend the knee first to create this transition through center and into our twist. So once again, much like Stacy grabbed her toes in our opening, in our twisting as well, if it's not enough, you could also lengthen that leg by extending and reaching opposite hand for opposite toes, right? It might work, it might not. You can always give it a try and release if it doesn't work for you. Yeah, good. Softening the face. and release gently and slowly. Left knee to the chest, right knee to the chest. Good. So maybe a second happy baby would feel good or something else, right? You might, you might notice that the front of your hips would appreciate a bridge pose here. Um, whatever it is, we'll take about the next 45 seconds or so before we transition into our Shavasana. You know, maybe a plow pose, legs go up and overhead. Play around in your happy baby. You just close your eyes and give yourself the permission to move your body in a way that would feel really good today. As you feel that your body is ready to rest in Shavasana, you'll just allow yourself to come to the earth. tongue from the roof of the mouth, letting the lower jaw separate, move into receiving energy, completely releasing, being held by Mother Earth, just letting
breath into the body, allowing the belly to rise. Exhale, opening the mouth to release. Do this twice more. Waking up slowly with intention. For the second time we've awakened it today, moving fingers and toes. right and left on the mat. Nice. Moving hands and feet when you're ready. The arms come overhead for a full body stretch. Lengthen legs, toes, arms. Beautiful. We'll bring those knees into the chest as we're ready, giving ourselves a hug like we really mean it, all the way down to the fingertips, giving a squeeze, lifting, squeezing, yeah, and then release the head down, roll over onto the right or left side, fetal pose, whichever side calls you over. to close our practice together. As we close in the physical, we stay open and connected in the energetic and ethereal. So once we're ready, hands to heart center. Taking this moment in acknowledgement of ourselves. For creating this time to show up for yourself, for investing in your health, your wellness, self-love, a moment of gratitude for yourself. I have gratitude for you. I honor you for showing up, for taking the time today. Take a moment in gratitude for each other for sharing our practice, our energy, and then we connect it to one another as we bow. Well, wonderful job. So once again, not everyone is as experienced in years of yoga as Stacy is or as flexy in her body. But no matter, uh, that's why we're doing this series this month. Uh, next week, uh, we will, on the 8th, we will have um, an athlete on our mat that doesn't have the same um, connective tissue flexibility, has a lot of strength, but um, we will move through asanas and postures a bit differently than um, kind of the effortless way that effortless way that Stacey was able to. So I thank you for being here today. Thank you for tuning in. And once again, I appreciate your donation. Please head on over to my YouTube page and check out any other videos. And if you're able to tune in live 1 p.m. next Monday on the 8th, specific standard time will be right here on zoom through our yoga lucian movement virtual studio and until then be well and we'll see you next time